Welcome to Your Space Journey, where we venture into the future of space exploration. Your journey begins now. Hey everyone, ready for another deep dive. This time, we're focusing on SpaceX and the upcoming sixth test flight of Starship. Exciting stuff. It really is. I mean, we're talking about a fully reusable system that could totally change how we explore space. Mm -hmm. And they aren't wasting any time, are they? No, not at all. It's incredible how quickly they're moving. Just finished the fifth test flight and already prepping for the next. And remember that booster catch on the fifth flight? Oh, yeah. I mean, watching those huge chopstick arms grab that booster out of the sky. Like something right out of science fiction. Totally. So for this sixth flight, they're going for another booster catch. What kind of upgrades did they make to it this time? Well, they focused on making it even tougher you know, adding what engineers call redundancy to the propulsion systems, like a backup for the backup. So it can handle pretty much anything during launch and landing. Exactly. They also strengthened key parts of the structure, made it more robust, you could say. Sounds like they gave it a serious workout. Yeah, you could say that. But it's not just about being strong. They've also fine-tuned the software that controls its flight path, making it even more precise. All about precision. But... I'm guessing safety is still the top priority. Oh, absolutely. The flight director has the final say on whether they attempt the catch. Even a tiny bit of risk, and they'll go for a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico instead. No compromises there. Makes sense. I know some folks are talking about sonic booms during the booster's return. Anything to worry about there? Not really. Those booms happen when the booster slows down super fast from supersonic speeds. It's kind of like thunder. Loud, sure, but totally normal and nothing to worry about. Card of the show, right. Exactly. Speaking of pushing limits, what about Starship itself? Will it try to land this time? Not quite yet. This flight is more about pushing its capabilities in other ways. They have a bunch of tests lined up to get it ready for those future landings, especially from orbit. Okay, I'm intrigued. What kind of tests? One big one is reigniting a Raptor engine in space. Seems like a small thing. It's actually huge. It shows that Starship can do deorbit burns, you know, slowing down enough to re-enter the atmosphere and land safely after an orbital mission. Ah, so it's like testing the brakes for when it comes back from orbit. Exactly. They're also focusing on the heat shield and re-entry, testing new thermal protection materials. They even removed some heat shield tiles in certain spots. It's all about gathering data for future versions, especially for catching Starship in midair, just like the booster. Wow, they're really putting it through its paces. So after all these tests, what happens? Another splashdown. You got it. Yeah. This time it'll be in the Indian Ocean. But even the splashdown is part of the testing. Analyzing things like the re-entry angle and pushing the flap control system to see how it handles those intense conditions. All in the name of making future landings safer and more precise. You got it. They're even timing the launch so that Starship re-enters over the Indian Ocean during the day. Better visibility means better data. It's amazing how much goes into planning each of these tests. It's a whole symphony of science and engineering. Absolutely. And it's all building toward a bigger picture, right? A future where space travel is more frequent, more accessible. It's pretty exciting to think about. It really is. So besides the booster catch, what other changes did they make to the whole launch and landing system based on what they learned from the fifth flight? Well, for one, they made some tweaks to the chopstick arm system, upgraded the hardware and software that controls them. Making the whole catching process even smoother, I imagine. Exactly. And it's not just about Starship, right? They're constantly refining the entire launch and landing system. Every little detail. Pretty much. Like, they've actually shortened the time it takes to offload propellants from the booster after a successful catch. Ah, so speeding things up. Making the turnaround time between flights faster. Right. It's all about efficiency, getting closer to that rapid reusability they're aiming for. I'm seeing a pattern here. They really are optimizing every single step. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. It's like we're watching a whole new way of doing space travel it evolve right in front of us. So they catch the booster. Starship goes through his tests, splashes down. Tons of data. What do they do with all that information? Does it get applied to future Starship vehicles? Absolutely. In fact, the vehicle they're building for the seventh flight test, it's going to have some major upgrades based on all those lessons learned. Oh, wow. Like what? Well, they're redesigning the forward flaps. Those are key for controlling the spacecraft during descent and landing. And get this, they're also making the propellant tanks bigger. 
more fuel. Exactly, extending the range and capabilities. Plus, and this is pretty cool, they're using the latest generation of heat shield tiles and thermal protection layers. So Scarship is getting a complete makeover, inside and out, all thanks to those early test flights. You got it. It's that iterative design process in action. Test, learn, improve, repeat. And each step takes them closer to their ultimate goal. A fully reusable spacecraft that can carry both crew and cargo to the moon, Mars, maybe even beyond. It's almost hard to wrap your head around the possibilities. But let's bring it back to this sixth flight for a second. What's the one thing you'd want our listener to remember as they follow along? Hmm, that's a good question. I think the main thing is that everything in this flight, from the booster catch to those heat shield tests to the splashdown, is about gathering data and refining the system. Each test flight, like this sixth one, is a step on the path to a really incredible future for space exploration. A future we can all get excited about. Yeah. You know, you really have a knack for seeing the big picture. What is it about what SpaceX is doing with Starship that you find the most fascinating? You know what really gets me? It's the potential ripple effect of this technology. I mean, yeah, Starship is about space travel, but the innovations they're making, it could revolutionize other industries too. Like what? Well, imagine high-speed travel here on Earth using those same principles of reusability and efficiency. So it's not just about reaching for the stars. It's about changing how we get around down here too. Absolutely. I think the impact of what SpaceX is doing goes way beyond rockets. It's about transforming how we think about transportation, technology, even our place in the universe. A sustainable future in space leading to a more sustainable future for Earth. Exactly. I mean, the technology they're developing for Starship, it could have applications in tons of fields from energy to material science to environmental protection. It's all about pushing the limits and then using those breakthroughs to help everyone. Pretty inspiring stuff. It really is. It's not science fiction anymore. It's happening right now. And that's what makes this upcoming flight so exciting. Another step forward, another chapter in this incredible story of human ambition and ingenuity. Couldn't have said it better myself. It really makes you think, doesn't it? What other amazing discoveries are just around the corner? It does. It really does. So to everyone listening, if you're interested in the future of space exploration, keep an eye on SpaceX and Starship. This is going to be big. Yeah, and while you're watching this next flight, think about what it could mean for you, for all of us, if space travel becomes more accessible. How would it change our view of Earth, of our place in the universe? A great question to leave everyone with. A huge thanks to you for being here and explaining all of this to us. Happy to do it. And to our listeners, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep looking up. Your space journey.